There's a real problem with Biomed Wands that nobody wants to talk about, but I will. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I really want to open up the discussion about the problem with Biomed Ones, okay? Now, as it is, it's hard enough to get into our career field. We all know that, and I hear about it every single day about how do I get in, what do I do? And I'm trying to lecture you guys and tell you the direction that you need to go to get in. It's going to take a lot of legwork, and it's going to suck. But once they're in, there's a huge problem with Biomed Ones that nobody wants to talk about. So let's do this right now. I'm sure that a lot of people aren't going to like this. Probably some people are going to disagree with me. I've been to several hospitals and there's only one hospital I know of that has done this correctly. So the problem with biomed ones, it all starts because the older generations, the biomeds from the seventies, the eighties, the early nineties, they are retiring. They're getting out, especially now that COVID's on the downslope. Seemingly, a lot of people are starting to think, hmm, the economy is doing rather well. My investment portfolio is doing kind of good. It's about time for me to get out. Or, unfortunately, I've heard of a few deaths out there in the biomed world. Yeah, some people actually worked until they died. Good for them that they love their job that much. But the problem is, is that you have all these older folks that are retiring or somehow leaving the biomed field. And there's this huge skill gap. All right. So what a lot of hospitals seem to be doing is they are taking those senior biomed positions and instead of downgrading them like a biomed two position, they're cutting them all the way down to like a biomed one position, entry level, bare minimum. Okay. And in some ways that could be really good, you know, especially if you're extremely top heavy, but what they're doing often is they're doing this as a cost savings measure. They're taking a biomed three or a biomed four, and as soon as they retire, die, whatever, they're cutting it down and they're making it a Biomed 1. The problem is, is that senior level Biomed was responsible for some stuff, all right? And by them decreasing it down to a Biomed 1, first off, Biomed 1 should not be on call, okay? Your Biomed 1, you might have an awesome Biomed 1. Respectfully, Biomed 1 should not be under call. The number one reason for that is Biomed 1s, according to their job description, they should be working under direct supervision of a senior level Biomed, okay? Their work is to be monitored to make sure that nobody gets killed or hurt, okay? Not just on their side of it, but sometimes patients or nurses, when Biomed gets involved in something, the nurses will hurt the patient and we are there to say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, don't do that. Well, a Biomed 1 is much less likely to step in and intervene when the patient's health is at risk than a senior level Biomed, either because they don't know or they don't want to piss somebody off or something. So there's a lot of reasons why a Biomed 2 or Biomed 3, Biomed 4, those are the guys that you want on call. Don't put your Biomed 1s on call. And if you do think that you need a Biomed 1 on call, then by all means, upgrade them to a Biomed 2. If you think that they're that trustworthy of a person, that their work ethic and everything is that good, then please upgrade them to a Biomed 2. Quit doing it to try and cheap out. I'm telling you right now, I am absolutely done. If this seems like a rant, it's because it is a rant. I have seen too many times where hospitals will hire on a Biomed 1 and they will expect them to go out and just churn out work orders. That's all they want them to do. They just want them to pound some cement, get out there and pump out some work orders. But you know something? Biomed 1s are not about cheap labor. Biomed ones are an opportunity to culture a technician into the type of technician that you want them to be. And that is the problem that we have. What I honestly believe Biomed ones need to have is a structured learning system. Like when I get a Biomed one that works with me, my first one ever, believe it or not, although I, I work with plenty of other Biomed twos, et cetera, junior Biomeds, this is my first Biomed one straight out of school. And the first thing I did is I gave her a bunch of little soldering kits. I paid for it out of my own dime. You know, I gave her a bunch of soldering kits and I said, here you go. I want you to do all these. I got her a soldering gun and everything, everything she needs because I want to see her attention to detail. I want to see her skill and 
I want to see your electrical knowledge, okay? Because when you're putting together those little soldering do-it-yourself kits, there's a lot of stuff you have to pay attention to, all right? And I'm not expecting perfection. Matter of fact, I'm hoping I don't get perfection. If the person has, let's say, really cold solder joints, we can fix that. I can fix that in 15 seconds. You give me a soldering gun, I'll show you how to clean the tip, how to correctly apply heat to the joint. We will get you up and going, and I'm going to watch you fix the rest of the joints. <laughs> you can't get the, you didn't know diodes had polarity? Well, guess what? You will now, all right? So there's a lot of reasons why I get these soldering kits out there. Plus, it gets them interested in electronics, all right? I know that this person's capability is within this range or this range just by doing a couple of those do-it-yourself soldering kits, and I don't give them any other instructions. I give it to them, and I let them figure it out. You go on YouTube, you want to go on Amazon.com. I don't care where you go to get instructions to do this, but I want to see you do it. Just see your skill set, okay? And that is the first step when I get a Biomed one, all right? Besides like the casual introductions, which is the most important thing for a Biomed one, introductions and a tour of the facility so that they can get their, their bearings. The next thing that I do is I give them these tests and I see their, their skill level, okay? I, this is not a fail type of system, all right? I just wanna see where they're at so I know where to go from there, okay? And luckily, I got a Biomed one this time who has a uh, very good personality and she's very open to learning because I'm asking her some questions that she probably knows and I know that she probably knows, but I want to see her confidence shine through, okay? It, it really does matter. Being a biomed and being a good biomed is when you know something, when you know something's the right thing to do, I wanna see that confidence. I want you to be able to tell me no, that that's not right. That's a good thing. So the problem with biomed ones is that they're usually in over their heads. They're usually used for cheap labor. They're not given mentorship and they're often overworked, okay? When you give a Biomed One this type of equipment and say run free across the whole entire hospital, you are probably setting them or yourself up for failure. Not saying that they're not capable. What I'm saying is there's a lot of etiquette. There's a lot of things that they need to know about being in a patient care environment, especially now after COVID or during COVID. It's there's a lot of things that they need to know about the etiquette, about certain certain areas of the hospital, what you can go into, what you can't, how to scrub in, how to scrub out, how to um, put on proper PPE and stuff. That's all stuff that you should be teaching your biomed one. But a lot of shops, oh, I wish I could talk more about it. A lot of shops do not do it properly. And it just really pisses me off because this is the future. Your biomed ones are the future and they need to be treated like they're the future, not like they're just some person that goes over and just does infusion pumps all day, okay? You want the quickest way to burn out a biomed one? Go and put them on infusion pumps all day. Now it's fine if they do infusion pumps. We all got started on infusion pumps. But guess what? You don't stick them there eight hours a day, five days a week. You don't do that. If anything, break up the day. In the morning, do a huddle, have them do rounds with you, and then in the afternoon, pound out some PMs on some infusion pumps. By all means, do that. And every once in a while, change it up. Have them do like water baths one day, have them do infusion pumps one day. Next day, you're going to have them out doing ESUs. Change it up. Don't just stick them on, uh, on uh, the workbench and have them just pumping out pumps. That's, oh, man. So one of the best things that you can do to a Biomed 1 is give them a sense of ownership. Now, one of the things that I really want my Biomed one to do is the ER is a good spot. PACU, pre-ops. PACUs and pre-ops are fantastic for your Biomed ones because guess what? If you got PACU post-anesthesia, well, guess what? They're not busy in the morning, okay? And, and pre-op is not busy in the afternoon. So that's a perfect opportunity. You show them these little quinky dinks about, you know, the nature of a hospital and now they, you just send them out there. Hey, go, go do your pre-op in the afternoon. Go do your PACU in the morning. You know, and they will. They'll take a cart and they'll go pound it out. And go get it done. But guys, I just made this video because I want you guys to get something really clear. That there is a serious problem with Biomed 1s. And it's not your Biomed 1. It's not about their education. We are just, overall, as a, as a career field, we are starting to treat Biomed 1s as a cheap labor source and yes they are but that's an opportunity 
it's an opportunity and it's if you hire in a, a biomed one it's a requirement that you go forth and you put the effort into training them if you are hiring a biomed one without any intention of future training or mentorship then don't hire a biomed one that's all there is to it guys this is one thing that really just upsets me don't put a biomed one out there to fail we're talking about somebody's career field and we're talking about people's lives and that's what happens is they just set a biomed one out there to go put stickers on equipment and that's the number one thing that's wrong with biomed ones it's not them it's us it's the career field it's a general trend of hospitals just pounding out those PMs because they want numbers they want numbers they want those dollars well this is about people and I'm here because this is about people to me. It's about perfecting this craft that we have called biomed. And the number one step is to make sure that you're setting your biomed ones up for success from day one. Proper introductions, give them a regular orientation of their area, give them some ownership over an area, show them how to do the equipment in that area of ownership, and then set them the task. See how they do. Change up their day. Don't just put them on fusion pumps and don't just use them for pounding out PMs or, or lick and stick on your PM process, okay? Anyway, guys, that's what I got for you. The problem with Biomed 1s is that a lot of people just aren't prepared to deal with a Biomed 1 properly. Thanks for watching, guys.